Welcome to this QuickBooks 2021 tutorial for beginners, how to record a prepaid expense. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. Okay, so first of all, you got to understand what a prepaid expense is. So under general accounting principles, if you want to call it that, uh, it, it's really all based on the matching principle, meaning, you know, you want to match an expense or, you know, some kind of income with the time period that, you know, the income is earned or the expense is incurred. Okay. So, so let's say, you know, as an example, you have an insurance bill that is, you know, for 12 months and you pay it all. So I pay my home insurance, for example, in one lump sum each year, but it's really applicable to that entire year. Okay, so if if I was a business, then I would have to to show, you know, one twelfth of that expense every single month in my financial statements. Okay, because otherwise it would be out of whack if I showed one big lump sum in one month. Okay, so you see this with, you know, subscriptions, you see it with insurance, you see it with all sorts of different expenses where, you know, people pay a bunch of it up front or like they prepay you know, 12 months or six months worth. And so we need to show that in your books and in your financial statements correctly so that you're just showing that expense uh, rateably throughout, you know, however long that it covers. Okay. So first of all, we're going to do a little bit of setup here. And what we want to do is we want to go to your, your chart of accounts. Now I've got it open right here, uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to go to company uh, and you're going to go down to your chart of accounts. Okay, so what so what I like to do, the way I like to set this up now, uh, a prepaid expense is an other current asset, okay? And you can see here in this sample company file, they have one called prepaid insurance, all right? Now, because, uh, or if I should say, you have multiple different types of prepaid expenses, so it could be insurance, it could be dues, it could be subscriptions, it could be some kind of software, whatever it is, um, I like to set up a main prepaid expenses account, okay, and then have sub accounts underneath that. All right, so let's say I'm going to go up here and, and I'm going to click on new and we're going to call this uh, 13,000. Okay, so let's set this up, say it's an other current asset, okay, and as it goes through all this, okay, we'll say this is 13,000. And we're going to call this prepaid expenses. Expenses. Okay. And it's not a sub account of anything. Okay. So we're going to say save and close. So now you see we've got this main account prepaid expenses. Now I'm going to go into this one and edit. So I right clicked prepaid insurance and I'm going to make this a sub account of prepaid expenses. All right, so now you can see that um, it is a sub account of prepaid expenses. Now, if I, if I want to set up another one, all right, so I click new and this is an other current asset. We're going to hit continue and we're going to call this 13200 and we'll say prepaid subscriptions. Okay. I'm going to make this a sub account, prepaid expenses, hit save and close. All right. So to me, this is just makes it cleaner. So, you know, if I were to print a balance sheet to show these prepaid expenses, uh, if I want to collapse it, I've just got one light item that says prepaid expenses. And if I want to see the detail, I can expand and see the detail. So this cuts down on having multiple accounts on the balance sheet that say prepaid insurance, prepaid subscriptions, et cetera. Okay, so it's just kind of a nice and clean way to do this. Okay, so now we say, let's get a, we get a bill. Okay, we get an insurance bill for, you know, let's say uh, to make it easy, we'll say $6,000 and it's for 12 months. Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to enter our bill. Okay, now if you're not familiar with entering bills, um, I've got other videos on the topic and definitely watch that because it's very, very important. Okay, so... We're going to uh, pick a vendor for this, uh, see if we have uh, some kind of insurance vendor that I can easily um, identify in the sample company file. And if not, I'm going to pick one. Okay, so we're going to say that this is uh, Larson Flooring. 
Okay, open purchase orders. No, we're not going to do that. Okay, so we're going to assume in this example that Larson Flooring is an insurance company. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to put in the bill number. We'll say that it's 17463, uh, and we're going to say that this bill is $6,000. Okay, so this is, let's say this is liability insurance that we just got this bill and we got to pay it for the entire year. All right, so normally what most people are going to do is they're going to say, what account does this go to? And they're going to put it to some kind of insurance expense. Okay, so then what happens is if you pull up a financial statement for uh, this particular month of December 2023, um, it's going to show a huge uh, insurance expense for that month. It's going to show $6,000, but that $6,000 really was not applicable to just that month. All right. And that's where you end up kind of throwing off your financial statements. Okay. So instead of putting this to expense, all right, we're going to go back up to the other current asset we set up. We're going to call this prepaid insurance. Okay. And if you put it to a customer job or a class, you're going to, you know, go ahead and assign those. We're going to hit save and close. Okay. So now, what I want to do is I'm going to pull up a balance sheet and we're going to go to reports and company and financial and balance sheet standard. Okay. December, 2023. And we're going to see here that we've got prepaid insurance of $10,050. And if I double click on this, we'll see that we've got 6,000 right there. Okay. So this put it as an asset. This is not an expense. All right, so now the question becomes, how do we get this from the asset on the balance sheet over to the profit and loss statement on a monthly basis? Okay, you can do this, well, I say one of two ways, but really one way to record it, but you can manually do this every month and you'll have to remember to do that in your month end closing, but that's kind of a pain, okay? Or you can set this automatically. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, we're going to go to the company drop down menu and we're going to choose make general journal entries. Okay. So this gets a little bit complicated, uh, but you know, it's very simple to do. And a lot of people get scared of journal entries and say, well, I don't understand debits and credits, but I'm going to show you how to do this for the prepaid expenses. Okay. So we're going to say, let's say that, uh, you know, we're going to recognize some of this expense for December, 2023. Uh, you can set this up to, you know, say 12-1-2023 or 12-31. Since our bill came in 12-15, uh, we'll say that this is, uh, let's say that, you know, this is really applicable to 01-01-24. So it really, we're prepaying it in December, but it's applicable starting in January 2024. Okay. Entry number, I always put in my initials so somebody in my office knows who did the entry and adjusting entry. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna say prepaid expenses, and we're gonna to go to our prepaid insurance account. Okay, so a credit reduces uh, an asset, okay? So since we wanna show that this prepaid expense is going down every month, so the asset is going down every month, and the expense is going up every month, that's what we're gonna show in this journal entry. Okay, so we're going to credit this balance. So this was $6,000 over 12 months. So that's 500 a month. Okay, so we're going to say 500 bucks. And to reflect, okay, I'm going to say to reflect uh, monthly insurance expense. Okay, uh, none of this is billable. None of that. If you need a class, you will assign it to your classes that you have set up. Okay, and then we're gonna go to insurance expense is the next line. Okay, so we're gonna say this is liability insurance, 500 bucks, okay? Very simple. Now this entry is gonna be done every single month until that $6,000 goes to zero as an asset, the prepaid insurance, and we show $500 a month expense, insurance expense. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna memorize this. And I'm going to call this prepaid insurance. Now, what memorizing does is this says you can automate to have this entry go in every month so that you don't have to remember how to do this. So we're going to choose how often we're going to say monthly. Next date, since we did 1-1-2024, is going to be 2-1-2024. And number remaining is going to be 5, okay? Because we just did 1. 
Now we've got five left, or I'm sorry, it's going to be 11. I'm thinking six months. We have 11 months to go. Okay. Days in advance to enter, I would say zero. Uh, that way it enters on 2-1-2024. And then we click OK. And you'll hear the photograph sound so that it, it memorizes this. Okay. Now we're going to hit save and close. And the entry is in there. Okay. So you can see if I go to a balance sheet as of 131, that's going to be $500 less. Okay. So let me pull up some of this detail here so you can see this. Uh, there we go. 500 bucks less. And if I go to my profit and loss statement, and let's see, we're going to go to company and financial profit and loss standard. And we're going to say, uh, let's see if I can choose next month. Okay, you're going to see the expense. So in January 2024, you see the liability insurance, $500 expense. Okay, so it's really that simple. There's a little bit of work to it, but you know, I think it's very, very important to get your financial statements correct, to get those expenses in the right period. And this is how you're going to record prepaid expenses. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below. Also head over to the QuickBooks University. Uh, you can discover a lot more over there at qbuniversity.org.